Welcome back to Maintainer's Garage. I'm Bags. Today we're going to be talking about uh, our air filters. We're going to change them on our Corvette. Technically, I've already changed them. I tried a live video. It didn't work out. Uh, yeah, most things I do in YouTube sometimes don't work out. But anyway, I'm going to pull them out. I've already changed them. So I won't have a new one to put in, but you'll see the process. And we're also going to be talking about just some generic stuff about the engine. If, if you're not sure what something is, that's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We're all new at everything at one point, right? Right. Before I say too much more, though, I want to say thank you to all the uh, new subscribers. Thank you for all the comments, the likes. I appreciate it. I don't say it enough, but hey, you know, thank you. And uh, just because I never say it, you know, caress that like button like you would uh, caress your coworker and end up in an HR violation. So there, said that one too. And thank you to the uh, three ladies that uh, watch my videos. One of you is my mom, one of them is my wife. Thanks, mom. Thanks, pumpkin. So to the third lady out there that's watching my videos, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm not ruining men for the air for you. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, before we talk about the air filters, I am going to talk about just some generics about engines and how you get a little more comfortable and understanding what is what and trying to figure out what is what. If you're just curious about the air filter, I'll put a timestamp down here and say, hey, jump to this portion of the video just to watch the air filter change. I get it. I say a lot of stupid stuff and embarrass myself frequently. You only see a portion of that because I'm able to edit most of it out. When you're with your friends, you can't edit it out. When you call a corbeau seat a caribou or a carabiner, um, you know, that just kind of sticks with you. And it happens. We've all been there. Again, we, we're all new at everything at some point, right? So this is just a generic, quick throwdown of, hey, you know, if you're curious about what's inside an engine bay, go pop the hood on your car and just look around. Poke stuff. I mean, don't punch it. Don't grab nothing and rip it out, but just put your hand on it. As long as it's cool, you ain't going to hurt nothing because the only thing that's going to get hurt is you if it's hot. Warning, caution, advisory. Just pop your hood open, look, and you're like, yeah, there's a thingamajigger, there's a whatchamacallit, there's a who you dad, there's a I don't know what the F that is. No problem. But with a little bit of, you know, trying to understand what things are, you can figure some of them out. Some you won't figure out unless somebody tells you, and that's okay. You look at your battery, right? Start with easy stuff. It's like, okay, I know what that is. Every time you know something in the engine bay, that's one thing you know. So that's one less thing you don't know. So by process of elimination, you'll figure out a lot of stuff pretty quickly. So again, the battery. All right. Well, next to the battery is this black box with a picture of a battery on it. Okay. What does that mean? I don't know. There's a little lever here. We can pop it open. Okay. It's full of fuses and relays. No idea what any of these go to. There's a cute little diagram right here that will tell me. Okay. Well, I know what that box is. So that's that. Um, what is this thing? Well, I don't exactly know. Well, okay, there's a fan attached to it. Okay. Why would a fan be attached to it? Okay, it'd be to cool it. Okay. Well, it's really big. Okay, it's in the front of the car. Okay. Um, maybe it's the radiator because fans would attach to the radio or be right behind the radiator if they're engine driven. So, okay, that's the radiator. All right. What are these two things? There's a plastic thing here and a plastic thing here. Okay, well, there's a big plastic thing that goes into the engine. All right, well, air in general typically comes from the, to the top of the engine and goes down inside the engine. Okay, so that's probably air. I'm going to use some <laughs> absolute words, but it's okay. It's just, that's the intake manifold. Okay. Well, somewhere in here is the throttle body. Maybe, maybe not. Well, you know, don't know. Fair enough. But this plastic piece, okay. Well, these are the air filters. Okay, so that, these are air filters. This is the intake for the air to come into the engine. This is the intake manifold where the air gets routed into the engine. Well, right on. Okay, now we know stuff. We know more than when we started. And that's what I'm saying is if you just come and look at it, and maybe you don't know what the weird thing over there is. And maybe you don't understand why that thing says caution don't open hot. Who cares? 
fine, no problem. Just think about it, look at it, grab it, touch it, and say, okay, well, I mean, here we've got a picture, and it says Mobile One, so that's where you put your oil in. Um, this particular container looks like it's got a wheel on it with two bars on it. Could it be a steering wheel? Probably. Okay, so that's probably where you put power steering fluid. So that's all I'm saying is, is you don't let this stuff scare you and you're going to say something dumb in front of your friends. I do it all the time. And that's part of your friends and yours relationship. You say stupid stuff, you pick on each other, you move on, and you bring it up years later. But that's another story and I digress for therapy. Anyway, that's all I'm saying. You want to learn about this? Come out here, look around, and by process of elimination, you can figure out some stuff, and you, you can deduce and understand what some of the stuff is. You won't figure some of it out, and that's okay. But that's how you start figuring things out in here and understanding this stuff. All right, now we're going to be talking about changing these air filters. Like I said, I've changed them already, but we're going through motions again. It's really simple. There's some metal tab here, metal tab here. There's a plastic box that has the air filter inside of it. You basically pull it out at an angle, come straight out. And there's your air, fil air filter. You pull it out, knock out the dust, take your new air filter, put it back in. It won't fit like that, right? If you tried to put this back in that hole, it won't fit. So clearly, this goes like that. These four little tabs are fingers. Tab A fits into slot B, and I'll move the camera and show you a good picture of that. So now that you know, you've know you swapped out your air filter, those fingers go in there. Just turn it up like that. It's basically slides right back in. And there's a little lip right here on this that uh, I'll show you a picture of as well. There's a piece that fits in between the two metal locking tabs. And that's how you know it's fully seated, and you just push it all the way down. Snap your lever in, hook your lever in the, that little lever hooks in like that on the bottom. You pull it from the top, locks down. You have another one over here. Same, same. Lap, lift that lever, grab this thing, pull out. Same deal, same exact deal. Flip it, same exact fingers, same exact tab A into slot B. After you replace it, take this. Push straight down in, and it's the same thing. There's a big plastic piece in between those two tabs. You can see that that's uh, seated. You take your metal tabs, get them under their little hooks, lock that down, lock that down, and your air filter's done. And while you're over here, you can look and see more random stuff on the engine, and you look at something that looks like it's a giant fountain at a lake. Okay, maybe we don't know what that is, but it's possible that could be winter washer fluid. I'm not saying it is, just saying it's very possible. Typically, it's got a picture that looks like a windshield, right? It's got a little lake uh, waves in it. That's how you know it's fluid. And then it's got a little spout shooting up a water fountain. Okay, sounds like washer fluid because they're showing you the windshield. The jets skeet water all over the windshield. So, you figured something else out. Got a little thing here that says DOT3. The only thing that I know fluid-wise that says DOT3-4 on it, sometimes five, is brake fluid. I can point to a whole bunch of this and call it a whole bunch of names and that doesn't help you. I'm just trying to say you can look at stuff, you can look in here, and you can try to figure this out. Don't let this stuff, you know, scare you and don't worry about the embarrassment. You're going to embarrass yourself unless you're just Joe Cool and you never embarrass yourself. I don't live in that world. I embarrass myself constantly. That's how you change your air filters on your C6 Corvette. Hopefully I've uh, shown you a little bit, made you think about some stuff and made you understand that, hey, you know, being the FNG, it's not such a big deal because we're all the FNG at one point and you don't know what you don't know. So go out there and uh, learn something new today because learning's half the battle. Yo, Joe. <laughs> Man, I'm old. Anyway, thank you for watching Maintainer's Garage. I appreciate it. Have a great day.